The Codex Gigas is believed to be the world's largest preserved medieval manuscript. In Latin, the name Codex Gigas means the giant book. It is 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, nearly 9 inches thick, and weights around 165 pounds. The ink that is used to write the giant manuscript was made up of crushed insects. As an illuminated manuscript, there are illustrations and decorations found throughout the Codex Gigas. It is also known as the Devil's Bible because it contains a large full-page portraits of the devil and the legends surrounding its creations. On page 289, there is a colloquial diagram of God's heavenly city, and right next to it, on page 290, there is a famous portrait of the devil. Portraits of the devil were common during the Middle Age, but its particular portrait is unique. Here, the devil is portrayed along the pages. The image is very big, 19 inches tall. The devil is crouching and facing forward. He is naked apart from an ermine loincloth. Ermine is worn as a sign of loyalty. It is believed that the evil wears ermine in this image to demonstrate that he is the prince of darkness. He has no tail and his body, arms and legs are of normal human portion. His hands and feet end with only four fingers and toes each, terminating in large claws. Both his claws and large horns are red. He has a large dark green head and his hair forms a skull cap of dense curls. The eyes are small with red pupils and his red tipped ears are large. His open mouth reveals his small white teeth and two long red tongues protrude from corner of his mouth. This doubling of tongue evokes negative association with serpents which have forked tongues, a metaphoric reference to dishonest human beings. On the opposite page of the portrait of the devil is an image of heavenly city. This has been interpreted as the heavenly Jerusalem mentioned in the book of Revelation. It is believed that the message intended here is to show the reward of a God-fearing life on one page and the horror of sinful life on the other. The Devil's Bible contains 310 pages made from vellum from 160 donkeys. Originally, the Devil's Bible contained 320 pages, but at some point in time, the last 10 pages were cut out and removed from the book. Each page shows impeccable precision and relentless attention to detail. The entire Devil's Bible is written in Latin. The Devil's Bible was meant to be a work of history. This outstanding work includes the entire Latin Bible, the Encyclopedia of the 7th Century by St. Isidore, the Jewish War and Jewish Antiquities by Flavius Josephus and the Chronicle of Bohemia, written by a Bohemian monk named Cosmos. Additionally, it includes numerous writings describing magical formula, exorcism rituals, and a calendar. The Devil's Bible includes the portrait of the Devil Faces, a picture of the City of Heaven, the only other image in the Devil's Bible. Illustration of the City of Heaven is without people in it. There are also two magic spells, both with specific instruction on how to identify and catch a thief. Weird medieval practices are also mentioned in the Devil's Bible. The manuscript contains a complete Bible, historical texts, magic formulas, and spells. The manuscript includes illuminations in blue, red, yellow, green, and gold. The general nature of the writing is completely consistent, with no variation in looks or quality. The experts concluded that this medieval manuscript is the work of a single scribe. Most surprisingly, the continuous Uniformity suggests that the Creator completed the Codex Gigas in a short period. However, manuscript specialist claims that this was actually impossible to achieve. The Codex has a unified look as the nature of the writing is unchanged throughout, showing no signs of age, disease, or mood on the part of a scribe. 
This may have led to the belief that the whole book was written in a very short time, but scientists are stating to investigate the theory that it took over 20 years to complete. The identity of scribe who created the Devil's Bible is unknown. The uniformity of writing suggests that it was written by one scribe and story says he was under immense pressure when he created the book. Amazingly, it is precisely accurate and without errors. But when researchers studied the handwriting, it was determined that the handwriting stayed the same throughout the entire book, confirming only one man wrote the entire thing. The other strange aspects came when they realized if one monk wrote the Bible themselves, and it must have taken at least 20 years, then why didn't their handwriting show any signs of aging? Your handwriting changes as you age, but this author maintained their handwriting throughout the decades. There are several myths surrounding the creation of the Devil's Bible, and they all involve the Devil. One of the most famous myths is that the scribe traded his soul to the Prince of Darkness so that he could complete the book in one night. According to the legend, the codex was created by a monk, Harman the Recluse in the Benedictine Monastery of Podlizes near Krudim in the Czech Republic during the first half of 13th century. The legend states that, as a resident of the Benedictine Monastery of Podlizes, Harman the Recluse who broke his monastic vows was condemned to be walled up alive and starved to death. Nobody knows what specific sins he committed. However, they were so heinous that the strict Benedictine monks keep it a secret. He broke his sacred vows and therefore he received a death sentence. He was to be walled up alive behind the monastery wall. Just before the final brick was put in its place, the monk begged for mercy. The abbot then offered him a deal. The monk was challenged to create a book that would include all the world's knowledge, and he was to do it in a single night. However, attempting to save his own life, he convinced the abbot to let him live if he could create a book that include all earthly knowledge in one night. In order to avoid this harsh penalty, he promised to create a book in one night to glorify the monastery forever, including all human knowledge. Near midnight, he became sure that he could not complete this task alone, so he made a special prayer, not addressed to God but to the fallen angel Lucifer, the devil, asking him to help him finish the book in the exchange for his soul. Facing this impossible task, the monk called the devil to help complete the book in exchange for his soul. The devil completed the manuscript and the monk added the devil's picture out of the gratitude for his aid. The following morning, the monk presented the abbot with his work, and his life was spared. In the Codex Gigas, the scribe's signature reads, Harmonus Inclusus. Harmonus translates as Harmon, which stands for the name of the monk. In Latin, the word inclusus means either punishment or voluntary isolation. This translation illuminates another possible theory in which the monk dedicated his life to creating a masterpiece. Records in the Codex end in the year 1222 AD. In 1477 AD, the Benedictine Monastery in Bohemian, which is known as the origin of the medieval manuscript, struggled financially. Therefore, the monks had no choice but to sell away their most treasured possession, the Codex Gigas. The manuscript was then owned by a Benedictine monastery in Bravnov. From 1477 to 1593 AD, it was kept in the library of a monastery in Bravnov. The monastery was destroyed sometime in the 15th century during the Hussite Revolution. In 1594 AD, the monastery then decided to lend the book to the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf. Sadly, the Codex Gigas never found its way back to the monastery since the Emperor Rudolf developed an obsession with the manuscript. Over time, Emperor Rudolf's fascination grew and his reign was affected by his paranoia. It wasn't long before the Emperor Rudolf family decided to overthrow him from his position. Six years following the Emperor Rudolf's death marked the beginning of the Thirty Years' War. 
During the Thirty Year War in July 1648 AD, when the Swedish army looted the city of Prague, they found Codus Gigas, the Devil's Bible, with other treasure they captured. At the end of Thirty Years' War in 1648 AD, the Codus Gigas was taken as war booty by the Swedish army. It was then taken to Stockholm along with many other precious items. The Codus Gigas ended up in Queen Christian's collection and was placed in the library at Stockholm Palace. On Friday, 7 May 1697 AD, a fire broke out at the Royal Castle in Stockholm, Sweden, which destroyed much of a royal library. Just moments before the flames reached the royal library, the librarian-in-chief ordered his men to salvage as many precious work as possible. The men had no choice but to start throwing the books out of the window. The Codus Gigas was thrown out of the window. It landed on an injured a bystander. Of the 24,500 books and 1,400 manuscript, only 6,000 books and 300 manuscript were saved. The Devil's Bible was also saved. It is said that it had landed on a person standing below the window, injuring him. Many people also believe that when the 165 pounds medieval manuscript flew through the air, its 10 missing pages got torn out from binding. Those mysterious pages remain missing until this day. Numerous people also claim that the missing section didn't simply fall out but was instead ripped out on purpose. The text's missing paper are rumored to be too dangerous for humanity. Three days after the incident, there was a trial to uncover the cause of the wildfire. Since the chief fire watcher and his two men weren't in their right positions, they received a death sentence. However, the exact cause of the wildfire remains a mystery. A story in 1858 AD claimed that the guard at a royal library fell asleep on the job when he was meant to be watching over the royal stacks. The guard was accidentally locked in the library and when he woke during the night, the guard saw books squirreling and dancing in the air led by a devil's bible and the devil himself. The next morning, the staff found the guard in a confused state, hiding under the table. On New Year's Day 187080, the manuscript was transferred to a newly built national library in Stockholm where it has been kept to this day. In 1878 AD, a young librarian, Augustus Strindberg, was leading a new employee through the National Library of Sweden, showing them the large collections of books. Strindberg opens the book Codex Gigas, flipping through pages, almost entranced by the writing. When he finally looks up at the new employee, he simply asks, Do you hear the voices too? Stringberg is said to have bought other to the library multiple times at midnight, taking them to the Devil's Bible to read from it for several hours. From September 2007 AD until January 2008, the Codes Gigas was loaned out to Prague, where it was shown in an exhibition at the National Library of Czech Republic. The manuscript is currently on display at the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm. General public can't see the original manuscript now, but can browse a digital version of book. The Chorus Gigas appears to include a confession of the scribe scenes in letters twice as large as the rest of the text. The writer admits to pride, eve, lust, greed, bestiality, and fornication. This list sits next to the illustration of the heavenly city. Perhaps the scribe attributed sins to himself that he did not commit as a warning to others. The list ends with a prayer of mercy and forgiveness. Why did Monk create such an enormous book that would have taken the rest of his life to complete? Why did he incorporate dark features such as vivid image of devil, magical formulae, and demonic incantations? Where do the boundaries between fact and legend begin and end? Who was Herman the recluse? Did he commit a sin that led to the punishment of isolation and the creation of the book for the rest of his life? 
Besides the name of the monk who created the manuscript, nothing more is known about the scribe. From the manuscript's remarkable design, it's recognized he was well-trained and highly competent. But why he may have created this particular piece or choose to copy the script he did is a mystery. And certainly, why he chose to draw the devil remains a puzzle. Did he sell his soul to devil 